This is Neely with Neely on Nutrition talking with the author DJ Blattner with her book, The Flexitarian Diet. In my last video, we talked about um, kind of like how it all came about and the benefits. I want to get a little bit more into some details here and talk about um, what DJ calls like different levels of a flexitarian diet, kind of like that there's different levels from like a vegan to more flexible. So DJ, talk to us about the, the various levels of a flexitarian style of eating. Okay. So I never knew that this was going to be important because when I wrote the book, I was like, let's focus on the word flexible. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It just like get more plants. This program is all about being pro plants. It's not anti-meat. Let's be flexible. And no, people were like, please give me details, more details. There's a beginner, uh, there's advanced, and then there's expert. Okay. And so on the various levels, you eat various amounts of meat. And again, you don't have to follow these rules, but if you're somebody who does like details, here it is. If you're a beginner, that's about 26 ounces of meat per week. That actually matches up exactly with the dietary guidelines. So if you're not exceeding dietary guidelines, uh, <laughs> what? Um, you are actually at the beginner level of flexitarian, you know, good for you. And 20, uh, the next 26 ounces is a, so a, a small, you know, a deck of cards is about three ounces. So if you could put that into like, so yeah. here's how I do it. Yeah. Is I sort of think 26 means 25. And then I'm like, okay, five divided by 25 is like five ounces. Like, so I'm having two totally like vegetarian days a week. Uh, and then for the rest of the days, it's like five ounces each day, which is maybe like two at lunch, three at dinner, something like that. So I sort of just do that loose math in my head. Yeah. Um, but you can take 26 ounces and divide it, you know, by seven days a week and have a little each week. Um, and, you know, like you said, it's like, you know, the typical uh, eyeballs are not calibrated correctly to what that looks like. I mean, it's not that much. It's thinking about meat more as a condiment uh, than the main dish, which by the way, is uh, pretty tricky for most people because when they're planning dinner, which we can talk about later, um, they think, oh, I'm having chicken, I'm having pork chops, I'm having fish, I'm having beef burgers, whatever. And so it's hard to like switch your mind into more plant-based meal planning. So we can talk about that. Anyway, 26 ounces a week for a beginner. Next level, advanced. This is where you're probably talking, you know, more like 18 ounces a week. So it's a little bit less than a, a typical dietary guideline. And you're getting more of your protein coming from like beans and lentils and nuts and seeds and all like tempeh and all the goodness of uh, plants. Um, and then if you're, you know, riding on that expert line, it's probably about nine ounces a week of meat. Um, over the years, I've had to um, also sort of recalibrate where fish falls uh, because there's so much talk about how you know good fats are in fish and Mediterranean diet. And so fish is one of those things that sort of like doesn't count against those numbers that if someone chooses to add fish to their diet, eight ounces uh, a week of a variety of fish won't count against that chicken and beef and pork label. Um, and so that's sort of like a new update um, because of all the research that's come out really since even 2003. Right, right. Talk to me about dairy. Where does dairy, because that's where I get the majority of my protein from is, is dairy. Yeah. So I uh, think uh, when I say mistakes that um, flexitarians make, one is eating too much faux protein all the box stuff, right? So like if you're eating a lot of like burgers, chick nuggets and stuff that are plant-based, uh, probably a time to reevaluate and do more whole food plant-based. Um, the other mistake that I sometimes see is not enough protein mix that I call it, that when you look at somebody's flexitarian diet, are they getting protein from lots of different places? You know, do they have some dairy? Great. Um, but if it's all dairy, then you're like, wait a second, like get some lentils in there, black beans, you know, white beans, garbanzo beans, edamame, tofu, tempeh, like, and really try and stimulate that protein mix because all foods have different things to bring to the table in terms of nutrition. So easy for me to eat, you know, this breakfast, this lunch, but I, I mean, I've got, you know, a cabinet full of them. You know, It's just a matter of full them out and, and starting to use them. So, okay. Uh, Neely, you know, what is so interesting? I got to say, having the beans in the cabinet, same, I have same. And I would notice I'm not really eating a bunch of them. Like what's going on? Literally just making sure that they're rinsed and drained and in the actual fridge 
ready to throw on has changed my life. So even though it seems ridiculous that it's like, okay, going that one extra step, will I actually eat more beans? Absolutely. And then, you know, even having like frozen edamame around, um, and I'm a big fan of like organic soybeans. So like organic tofu, organic tempeh, which is fermented soybeans, you know, that's a hot topic right now, fermented. Um, but just having that stuff around and ready to roll, I think is um, the first most important step. <laughs> At least that's what I found. Setting up your environment for success. I would put the beans in the refrigerator because I like cold bean salads. And so, I, but taking it a step further, yes, I need to rinse them and drain them and have them ready to go. So that's it's true. And it's interesting that you know that you like cold beans. I was in Greece years and years and years ago had the best white beans of my life. I was like crying. I was like, what, how are these so good? So I talked to the chef and um, they do like a little bit of olive oil and herbs and then heat the beans before they like toss them onto salads and stuff. So I think that could also be a fun thing is making sure that, you know, if people are burning out on beans is like, don't also forget that they could be seasoned, um, you know, in fun ways, even like taco seasoning, um, and then put in the fridge so that you could, you know, have them around flavored. What I love about your book too, is it's the, the recipes are so simple, so easy. They're foods that you would eat regularly. So just kind of packaged in certain ways. I'm like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, thank you for saying that. I pride myself on sort of the meal assembly vibe <laughs> where it's like, let's, yes, I call it a recipe, but it's more like put this with this with this bada bing bada boom there you go um and that's really just because it's how I like to eat as well like I have a full life of many many things I enjoy doing I don't want to actually be bogged down with a lot of kitchen duties um but that doesn't mean you can't still eat super well right so thank you for uh acknowledging that but yeah I'm a big fan of the canned beans um myself I just you know rinse and drain them and have them ready to go in the fridge I think it's great I do get into periods of time maybe more in the fall and winter when I'll do like crock pot beans and I'll take the dried beans and I'll make a big pot of beans but that would not be my standard or my norm um so there are some meal ideas that I want us to get into, but I want to save that to the next video. So watch here for some practical meals for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks from DJ Blattner's book, The Flexitarian Diet, and just flexible eating, <laughs> a more plant-based diet that's flexible. All right. Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.